Morning guys, coffee at the ready here. Um, this morning we're brewing a Berliner Weisser, or um, pretty much my take on, a, on what a Florida Weisser um, is. I think the major difference between a Berliner Weisser and a Florida Weisser is the additions of fruit. So in a Berliner Weisser, traditionally um, a fruit syrup, it's served with a fruit syrup, um, whereas in a Florida Weisser the fruit is added into the brewing process, normally I think into the fermenter, or at least that's what we're gonna do. Um, so yeah, mostly this recipe is um, is wheat um, and pale ale malt. Uh, I've got a small amount of um, golden naked oats in there as well, um, and some carapils, um, just to add a bit of body and a bit of um, extra sort of sweetness with those golden naked oats. Um, and then I've got a bit of acid malt as well. We're going to try and mash in um, around about 5.2 pH. So um, yeah, let's get the um, grain dough in and then I'll come back to you and we'll do a pH reading. Cheers. So I've just calibrated my pH meter and I'm going to take a reading here of the mash. So there you go, I think you can see there 5.2, um, 5.3. So yeah, it's hovering around 5.2, 5.3, which is spot on. Um, I was aiming for the lower end, I was aiming for 5.2 really with this mash because we are going to um, acidify it with some lactic acid before pitching our lactobacillus culture to drop the pH down. So yeah, I wanted to mash in um, on the lower end so that uh, we're closer to that um, range when we, when we add our lactic acid. Okay, so there we are at the end of the mash out. We did a 10 minute mash out at 75 there. Okay, we're looking for 16 litres of sparge water. I'm just going to keep a tally because the recipe didn't import from Brewfather very nicely at all. It's completely wrong. We might the mash water and the sparge water quantities are completely wrong. The grain bill was completely wrong. I don't know what's happening with uh, the grain father software lately. So we are 10 minutes into the, or five minutes into the boil, 10 minutes ago. I've just connected up the counterflow chiller. I'm um, gonna recirc boiling hot wort through the counterflow chiller 
just to sanitize it and then we'll bring it back up to the boil um, for about five minutes afterwards and then we will start to chill. Okay, so we'll stop recirking. Just gonna get the bottom a bit of a scrape. And then we'll let this come back up to the boil for five minutes and we'll start to chill. Okay, so that's the end of the quick 15 minute boil. I'm going to turn the heater off, turn the pump on. Just turned on the, the recirc water, the cold water. So that's gonna now chill down this wort in here. Um, gonna aim for, I'm gonna aim to try and get it down below 40 to pitch the lacto. Uh, so this is my lacto bacillus plantarum starter which I made in the week. Um, I didn't actually film it. Um, if you'd like me to show the recipe for it, it's um, well, it's a recipe out of uh, Fal Allen's Gosa book. So um, yeah, if you'd like me to share the making of that, we can do that another time. But um, yeah, uh, we're gonna pitch that the ideal fermentation temperature for um, Lactobacillus plantarum is between 28 to 32 degrees C. So I'm gonna try and chill this fermenter down now to um, uh, as close to that range um, as I can get it with, uh, with our groundwater. Um, ideally, if we can get it down to below 40, um, that'll be quite good because um, I think it, uh, over 45 degrees, it's not, it's not happy. So, yeah, well, we're chilling down now, we'll see where we can get to. Okay, so while that is chilling, I have just taken a pre-boil um, gravity and we're at 10.46, we were aiming for 10.40, so I've uh, overshot that a little bit again. Um, but yeah, the, the OG we're aiming for is 10.47, so we're going to do a really quick boil again tomorrow. Um, and obviously some of those sugars will be eaten by the lactobacillus so we might be on track for the OG we're aiming for um, we'll we'll see tomorrow but yeah 1046 at the minute to pre-boil okay so with that chilling down I'm gonna add five milliliters of lactic acid five grams of lactic acid that's five and a half it's too much Okay, so that was um, five and a half grams of lactic acid just thrown in there. Um, and then I'll just give it, while well, it's still chilling, we're down to 44 at the minute, so while it's still chilling, I'll give it a chance to recirc a little bit longer. And then we'll check the pH before pitching our lactobacillus culture. Um, I want the pH to be sort of close to four and a half, uh, definitely below five, but, um, but closer to four and a half before pitching the, the lacto. Okay, so that has dropped to 35 degrees, as maybe you can see. We're going to pitch in our Lactobacillus plantarum culture. I always leave a bit behind so I can reuse it, regrow it up, and then this is the fun step. I'm going to try and cover this with some cling film, just to keep the oxygen out. It's not the easiest kind of drop it down so that it sits on the surface of the wort Oops. and then stick it onto the side of the, the grain butter. So I'll get another one in the other direction. One more in like in the diagonal of the direction that we didn't 
to the first two times. Just to try and seal it in. Nice. And then I'm going to pop the lid on. And just just cover the hole up slightly. Top of it. So I hope you can see there it's set to 32. So I'm going to put the heat on, um, and obviously it's not heating because it's currently at 36. But if it drops down to 32, then it'll just warm it up back up to. Um, if it drops below 32 it'll warm it back up to, to 32. So yeah, we're gonna leave that now probably for for the time is 11.15. Um, I'll check it again. I'll check the pH tomorrow morning and we'll see what we're at. Catch you then. Right, good morning guys, the time is half past eight. So that is 22 and a half hours after pitching the lacto. Um, temperature, temperature has been set at 32. pretty much since uh, an hour after we pitched the lacto yesterday. I'm just going to take a sample, check the pH, and more importantly, give it a taste. See where we're at. that back up just in case it's not quite ready yet. It smells like it's ready. Yeah, so as I said, um, it definitely smells like it's ready. Oh yeah, that's got a nice tartness. Um, I wouldn't say it's too sour yet, um, or wouldn't say it's as low as maybe I was hoping to go. Um, I would say it's probably somewhere around 3.4, 3.5 pH, but uh, let's let's give it a check and see what it says. Yeah, so it is reading 3.3, 3.3, uh, 3.4, um, which is what it tastes like as well. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, I'm gonna give it a few, I'm gonna give it a little bit longer just because I still need to um, sort this fermenter out. Um, that has the vice beer in, so we're gonna empty, we're gonna package the vice beer, uh, and we're gonna steal some yeast from there as well. Okay, so that was transferring complete. Um, yeah, I got a uh, full keg of the vice beer there, so pretty happy about that. I'm gonna crank this kettle up to the boil for the Florida vice and um, yeah, get cleaning this fermenter out so that we're ready to to pitch into it when, uh, when the boil's done. Okay, so the fermenter is, uh, it's just soaking in some caustic. The kettle is coming up to a boil where it's 61 degrees. Um, I just want to have a quick chat about this book here, this Gosa book by, by Fal Allen. I referenced it earlier um, or yesterday when I was talking about the starter for the Lacto Bacillus. And um, yeah, I can't emphasize enough how much difference making a Lacto starter makes to these sour beers. Um, this, this kettle soured um, down to 3.3, the pH meter settled at 3.3. Um, it kettle soured down to 3.3 in 22 hours. Um, I've had it anywhere between 18 and 24, but never more than 24. And I often read on these forums and on groups that people take like three, four, five days to get their kettle sour down to um, the correct pH. And yeah, I just can't see that being good for the beer to um, to let it uh, sour for that long. So um, yeah, I can definitely recommend this book. Uh, I'll drop a link down in the description below um, so you know like what, what book I'm talking about and then hopefully you can try and source it and get hold of it um, wherever you might be. But uh, it's I know it says Gosa and I mean he literally did write the book on Gosas but you can apply it to all your, a lot of the knowledge in there, you can apply it to all your, um, all your sour 
beers. It uh, talks about the correct um, uh, like temperatures to grow, all the different types of lacto in, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely um, worth a read. Uh, we met up with him at the boot camp, at the beer boot camp up in Joburg last year, and um, definitely changed my approach on uh, on sour beers. So. Yeah, grab the book, have a good read of it. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail about what's in the book because you, know, you guys can just get hold of the book and uh, and, and read it and uh, definitely worth supporting somebody that's uh, gone to the effort to write something as informative as this. I'll come back to you when we're up in the boil. So as you can see that is up to a boil there. Just stir this, all this protein back in, a lot of protein because there's a lot of wheat in here. Okay, I'm just going to do the bottom plate, a bit of a scrape. Lastly, we're going to throw in our water additions and some yeast nutrient. And just give that one last stir in. Set the timer here for 15 minutes. Okay, so about the last three or four minutes here, I'm just going to pop my whirlpool on in there, and then also put the comfort chiller on to research some um, of that boiling hot wort through. Because as soon as the um, boil is done, we're going to chill down to 80 to pitch our whirlpool hops. So yeah, I'm just gonna run that counter chiller now until the end of the boil. I know the temperature will naturally drop slowly, slightly, sorry, but um, that should be enough to sanitize that counter chiller. There you go, that's the end of the boil. I'm gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna turn on the cold water. Okay, so we're at 97 and we want to drop it down to below 80 and I'll give it a little stir every now and then as we did in the last video just to make sure that the whole temperature has dropped, not just the bottom part. Uh, I'll come back to you when we're adding the hops. Okay, so the temperature has dropped just below 80. Um, I've just given it a stir. I'm going to go and turn the cold water off now and turn off the pump. Let's give my hands a bit of a sanitize. We're gonna throw in our whirlpool hops, which are 70 grams of lemon drop. Okay, so that's gonna be five minutes um, whirlpool and a 15 minutes stand. 70 grams sounds like a lot of uh, hops for a for a sour beer. Um, it is, um, but these are quite low alphas. These are 5.3% um, alpha acid, and um, we're adding it in sub 80. So we're only going to get about five IBUs um, from them, which is perfect. But we're going to get a lot of the a lot of the flavour and aroma from the lemon drop, which. Uh, should work really nicely with the fruit, with the blueberries and the strawberries and the blackberries. Nice bit of citrus with them. Okay, so that was a five minute whirlpool and then we'll give it another 15 minutes to settle. Okay, so that is a um, 15 minute stand done. So I'm gonna turn on the cold water and I'm gonna pump straight into the fermenter. Gonna have to cool this down anyway to 16 degrees to pitch the yeast in. So might as well start the transfer right away. So it's currently transferring at 26, which is the lowest it's been for a while. So it's 10:51 at um, 29 degrees, which is 10:53 um, at the correct temperature. So yeah, 10:53. We were shooting for. 1047, so we're a little bit higher than that, but that's okay. Let's also do a check on the pH while we're here. 
So there, 3.2 the um, the pH is. I actually thought it would be slightly higher than that with um, the hops that we added. Um, because before I pulled it up to the boil, I checked it, that it was at 3.3. Um, again, <laughs> this pH meter is not the best, so take it as it is, but yeah, 3.2. Right guys, we are pretty much down to temperature at 16 and a half on a ferment at 16. Um, I'm going to attempt to aerate this, unlike the Hefeweizen that we did. I want to... Um, I want this yeast to ferment nice and clean, so let's bring it up here. And give it a bit of aeration. So let's try and get some of this yeast that we harvested earlier in there. I'm hoping that this is, because this is so fresh, it's going to take off like a rocket. The lid back on. Lock in. Okay, so that is now sat at 16.9. It's still cooling. We're gonna get down to 16. Um, yeah, and hopefully this yeast takes off quite quickly. Like I said, we want to ferment it. I want to ferment it at around about 16. The optimum temperature for this yeast is between 18 and 24, but it can go down. It can tolerate temperatures as low as 12. So the hope is that by fermenting at 16 um, it's going to be quite a clean fermentation like i said earlier it's not the ideal yeast for this brew at all and if you're going to make this one at home and you have uso5 around or, or another clean neutral strain even like a cold strain like k97 or something like that would be would be great but um yeah i don't have that so we're going to pitch this in and hopefully we don't get too many bananary clovey esters there Thanks for watching guys, um, hopefully that was uh, useful and give me a shout if, you, um, if you're going to brew this one at home, let me know how you get on um, and then in the next video we'll talk about the fruit additions and also we'll do a tasting. Cheers for now.